Well, from one tortured franchise to another struggling franchise, let's just say at the moment, and that is Leicester City, Jason. This is a Cinderella story last year that everyone, well, yeah, it is last year now. 2016 was the year for Leicester City to win the Premier League after just missing relegation by the skin of their teeth. But it turns out a recent report, courtesy of ESPN, which mm -hmm. I actually did like and looked into, mm -hmm. is that defending your title is not as easy as people would think. And this is something that, when it comes to Leicester, many people kind of thought was going to happen this year. They weren't going to be able to repeat. But most people, let's be honest, didn't expect them to suffer this much domestically. So to put it into perspective, they just have 21 points from 20 games. Uh, that looks pretty dire on paper for a team that last year had 40 points accumulated going into Christmas, mm -hmm. competing at the top level of the table. But it is reminiscent. Two points off, to be honest, of Chelsea last year. They had 23 points at this stage last season, uh, and that was the season that they went on to try and repeat uh, their Premier League trophy. They were struggling throughout the year, uh, went into turmoil, changed their manager halfway through the season. As we know, Jose Mourinho left. A new trend could be emerging, Jason, because three of the, uh, the most dramatic dips have happened in the past four years when it comes to mm -hmm. teams going on to try and repeat. So Leicester City, as I mentioned, uh, are 19 points worse off. Chelsea are 23 behind uh, in 2015-16. And in 2012-13, champions Manchester United went from 49 points uh, uh, under Sir Alex Ferguson to 34 under David Moyes, which eventually cost him his job. But the overall point to take away from this, Jason, is it's unfair to compare Leicester City's average to that of those big-name teams because... They're right there with what you what Leicester City have accumulated in the right. past few years. On average, Leicester City is right where they're supposed to be, yeah. according to history. They're actually a little bit behind. Uh, but what I was curious so much about is that, you know, for one, they lost one of their best players. Yes. And the reigning Premier League Player of the Year, Riyad Mahrez, has been struggling. Yes, yeah. Uh, and a lot of, so you look at it this year, besides the fact that now everyone's gunning for Leicester. So you have to take into account the added pressure take into account their Cinderella run. And let's also not skip this. They're doing phenomenal in the Champions League. Yes, sir. And they made it to the round of 16, the knockout stage. And we won't know what's going to happen with that, but just imagine for a second that they do go to the quarterfinals. Well, then you could say automatically that 2017 was pretty much as good of a year, you know, less hardware, I get it, than 2016. Yeah. Because this team that has no business, according to some, to be in the Champions League, had no business going five and one. Five wins and one loss, I believe, right? Yeah. In the, uh, in the, Ch in the group, group stage. stage. Yeah, well, phenomenal in the group stage. And I think that there is something to be said about the new kids on the block, Leicester City. Like, when they're going into the Champions League, no expectation, everyone else is realistically underestimating them, and they thrive off of that. No one's underestimating Leicester City in the Premier League anymore. No one. Because what happened last year is you underestimate them, you go to the King Pass Stadium, and you get rocked. We've seen signs of that again. Manchester City, a few weeks back, demolished by Leicester. They've still got that brilliance in their locker at home. They just need to be a little bit more consistent. Uh, they got a victory recently, a Slomani header, off the back of a fantastic Albrighton cross. He really is gifted with his deliveries into the box. But it is unfair to have them in that same category. Yes, they won the Premier League title, but there's no doubt that was going to be a one-off. Uh, I think a lot of shoes would have been eaten if they went on and repeated back-to-back. They're still a little bit behind their average, and I think Claudio Ranieri would prefer if they were pushing higher up. But I think it's unfair to expect Leicester City to be mixing it at that level. And Golo Kante was such a crucial cog in that machine, and to lose him, the whole system broke for a certain period of time. The only reason that the Champions League, it didn't affect theirs, because teams weren't as prepared. As I mentioned, teams were going into Leicester this season now, thinking, all right, they've got no Kante in there, but we still need to make sure that we don't underestimate them because they're good on the counter-attack shutting up shop and forcing Leicester to play outside their comfort zone. And that's been a problem for Claudio Ranieri. So uh, I think that it's going to be a tough season. It will go down in history as one of the worst Premier League seasons as for a team trying to repeat uh, for a Premier League title holder. But you can't compare them to the Chelsea's, the Man City's, the Manchester United, the Arsenal's because those teams are adequately equipped to go in season by season. Leicester City, as we know, they didn't strengthen as much and actually were weakened going into this season's campaign. And on top of all of that, first of all, brilliant points. And uh, I have to say, when it comes down to the memory of Leicester City, nothing's going to beat 2016. I think you did a whole clip on it. Yeah, of course. Nothing's going to beat that yet. How do you think they fare over the next mm, two months? That's going to be interesting. Chelsea on the 14th. Wow. Southampton and Burnley on the 22nd and 31st. 
Manchester United to kick off February. Swansea in the middle. 20, uh, the 22nd of February, they get Sevilla in the Champions League, and five days later, they got to travel to Anfield. I really hope this survives. At that point, you got to say, punt Chelsea, punt Man United, punt Swansea, punt Liverpool, and all the focus got to be on Sevilla, right? I don't know, because then you may be sacrificing survival. No, what no, good is your you, no you, you, beat, you beat up Southampton, you beat up Burnley, you can even beat up Swansea. Yeah, Swansea's got to be a victory. They're a team that are whipping boys at you the moment. You call in Golo Conte. I think. And you go. We need you back. Look, just for a month. Just get us through February. Just get us through February. You can go back to Chelsea. We, just, just February. We'll swap Mares for Conte for one month and then we'll just, just as a thought experiment. I don't think it's a, it's a problem that Ranieri would have liked to have had last year. It's like you're toying with survival in European glory. R Claudio Ranieri is too real. He's, he's far too real to ever be a manager. He's too... They ask him questions like... Tough questions like how do you look back on 2016 and, and do you feel like you're disappointing your 2017? He goes, look, 2016 was the most remarkable year of my life and... This has just had to be expected. I wasn't expecting to win another Premier League. <laughs> yeah. And you're sitting there going like, man, you're just you're too honest. He's, you're too brutal. He's a humble man, the tinker man. I, I think everyone celebrated it as if you were Claudio Ranieri. Because if you know football in the past, this is a guy that, I mean, he inherited Chelsea with all their wealth. Yeah. And then he was one of the first ones to go because he couldn't deliver them the, um, the immediate trophy they wanted. So it was a great to see him get that glory. A deserving but, guy. Yeah, I think that Leicester kind of encompassed the way people looked at 2016 is like, oh, it's going great. And no, that's why people always said like 2016 done. was such a terrible year. It's like it wasn't a terrible year. 1665. 1665. That was a rough year. I've always said the bubonic plague. That was a year to remember. 33%. No it was more than that. Um, so, yeah, don't judge Leicester by, uh, in comparison to the fact that they will probably go down as the worst ever repeaters in history. But... Look at them as a, as a team that defied expectation in 2016. And yeah. Ranieri, as I mentioned, will have a tough job this year. How does he balance survival, which is their realistic expectation at this point? Survival, maybe pushing for top 10, but Champions League as well. Imagine if they got relegated tough one. and, and won a Champions, and Champions League. Don't, don't rule it out. Then he can win. No, because, no, actually, I want They can them. repeat in the Champions League, but they'll play in the Championship. Yeah, they got to win. Then the only thing left would be like the FA Cup and the Europa League. And after like a three-year period, we'd be like, oh my God, Leicester City won everything. Won everything. <laughs> Here's in the comments. What do you think about Leicester City season so far? Would you like to see them go on in the Champions League? But could it come at the cost of their Premier League survival? Francis underscore Maxwell, Jason of 91. If you're watching on Pluto, you can check out all the clips. As you know, it's been a pleasure. See you soon.